guys, good morning. It's July 29th. So sorry for those technical difficulties. I think YouTube is having some connection issues this morning. Um, so I think people will slowly be coming in. So I'm just gonna like chit chat for a little bit so everybody can kind of join. Um, today I'm gonna do things a little bit out of order than I normally do. I'm gonna show new quilt kits. I'm gonna show some stuff I'm sewing. I'm gonna show some new stuff, but it's just gonna be a little bit out of the normal, ordinary uh, thing. But um, super excited about today. I uh, have a lot of like different random content, so I think it'll be fun. I'm gonna start off with um, just some new quilt kits, and I'm gonna kinda talk about them, um, just all the different kind of things we offer, and maybe talk about if I was uh, sewing them, maybe some different tips if, if um, tips for you. So I'm gonna start with this one. Oh, the one behind me, sorry. The one behind me right here is all the colors quilt kit. It's actually a Jolly Bar quilt kit. So it's the Beyond Bella and that collection is awesome. If you guys haven't seen that or bought it or seen it in like brick and mortar, it's really awesome. And I'm loving the white on white little hashtag um, it's 64 square, and Angel designed it, uh, Angel sewed it, and Angel, uh, Gina quilted it. And that's a bigger uh, Jolly Bar pattern. And just to tease, now don't go to Fat Quarter Shop and search, but we have released three Jolly Bar books. And um, my hint is maybe this weekend, maybe I'm proofing the next one. Um, so that, but we're, we basically with Jolly Bar books, we don't put them on the coming soon page. We just release them when they come out. So that's something you can look forward to because we do get a lot of questions on the Jolly Bar patterns, but we really like those pre-cuts to be exclusive to Fat Quarter Shop and be something that our customers get. Um, the next quilt I'm going to show you is an It's So Emma kit. And if you look at the pattern, it also uses Beyond Bella, but we did different colorways. So there's actually four, the one you see, and then we showed navy, pinkish, greenish, and we also list the skews on the back. So if you wanted to um, do the different colorway, you could. And um, on this one, it does use uh, triangle paper, and we've been adding that. We used to not add that, but we got a lot of requests to add it. So we started adding that. So if I was making this one, I would definitely use triangle paper. And then I would probably, on this part, let me see. Right here, let me try to get it. So right here, what I would do is I would make the center part. And I would make that using, like I said, the triangle paper. But when I made this little piece right here, this, tri this huge triangle right there, I would make it much bigger, like an inch or two bigger, and then trim down. And that's how I would get that accurate. And this one right here was designed by Angel. Terry made it and Gina quilted it, Gina Tell quilted it. So this is a quilt kit. It is also a pattern, both PDF and paper. This next quilt is one of our shortcut videos. And so if you're on our channel, you probably know about our shortcut videos, but it was one of the first series that we started with. And a shortcut video is something that's free to our customers, free pattern, free video, and it always uses a pre-cut. And this one right here uses the Frisky by Zen Chic Charm Pack. And this is a Bella Solid. And we do list on our pattern what we used. This one was designed by Angel. Carrie made it. And Gina Tell quilted it. And I'm going to show the binding and the backing real quick. And when you're looking at these quilts, you can kind of look at the size and the scale of the pantograph. And then this is the backing that Carrie put on her quilt. 
So that's uh, fresh, modern, and this collection does have, I think, some rayon skews. This next quilt is bigger. It's 72 inches square. It's called Sugar Plum Dreams, and uh, this fabric is the Holly Jolly fabric by Urban Chicks that had the two Santa panels, and the two Santa panels are now discontinued. There was two colorways. Um, they're both discontinued, so if you don't see the other kits online, that's why. But what this is is uses one Jolly Bar, and it uses the background from the collection, so you can barely see it, but there is like a little motif on it. This one was pieced by Teresa and quilted by Jen Saxena. And then on the back, I just wanted to show you this. This is not the backing that we sell as the backing set. This is a actually collection from Riley Blake. And the reason why it's on the back is sometimes when we make these quilts, which we do probably six months in advance, we might not have the fabric for the back. So sometimes when you see the backings on camera, it might not be what we're offering online, but it's what either the piecer really likes or something that we have in stock that we can add. Um, so on these, we're going to do pop-ups at the end all at once so that you can see the see more of the quilt, Cheryl. We're just, um, it's too hard for me to, to hold them, but we are going to show pop-ups. I'm going to just do it at the end all at once. This next, one, this next one's really fun. It's called Summertime Fun, and all it is is squares, and it is a play on color placement. And Ruby Star had a sew along and it started earlier in the summer. And so we put together some kits and when they did this, it was really fun because they gave a lot of different colorways. So you could pick what you liked. And this one Kate sewed and Sarah Campbell quilted. And on the back, we put, um, Kate put a wide Shannon and it's C390 Navy and with those wides they're 90 inches and so if you're going to ever put a shannon cuddle soft on the back if you have a wide quilt it's good to use the 90 inch wide so you don't have to do a seam and who decides on the quilting um i actually pick i get um suggestions from the sample makers but I ultimately pick because I don't ever want to show something on camera that I personally don't like because I can't hide my face. And if I don't like it, I'll show it. And I think that would be really rude to, um, to do that. This next kit is called Yuletide. It also uses a Jolly Bar and you're going to see in the pop-up in a second, there are four blocks. So this could actually be just a table topper with one block. This is the Merry Little Christmas collection by Bonnie and Camille. It's 64 inches square. It is designed by Angel. It does have an inner border, a middle border, and an outer border. And the inner border and the binding matching really kind of pulls the design together. Angel designed this. McKenna sewed it, and Gina Tell quilted it. And again, at the end, we are gonna show pop-ups of those, these. Now this quilt right here is called Yuletide Quilt Kit. Nope, it's called Shaded Trail Quilt Kit. This is a classic and vintage video. So the classic and vintage series is where we take an antique quilt block, recolor it, and then usually the antique quilt blocks that we find are from the Kansas City Star newspaper from like the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, and they usually made templates. So we change them uh, to be square to square or half square triangles or flying geese so you don't have to make a template. This video came out uh, two days ago, and it's a free block video. The fabric here is Snow Kissed by Sweetwater, 
and it is a rectangular at 50 by 62. This was designed by Crystal. Teresa sewed it and Gina quilted it. And so this one is a video and a free pattern. Now, if you wanna set the blocks, there's a low price PDF. And then this is the backing that we used. And right here, you can barely see that seam. So when you use kind of a small scale print and put it together, you'll never see that seam. So kind of remember that when you're thinking about what you're gonna put on the back. This next kit is a little bit similar to the Ruby Star where it's very basic and it is basically a patchwork in the center, pinwheels on the side. This is the I Believe in Angels fabric by Bunny Hill. It's 50 by 64 and it uses a jolly bar. So a lot of times in our jolly bar, you're gonna see half square triangles and squares and flying geese and that's so that we can do a maximum use of the fabrics and get the quilt as large as possible and lose as little fabric as possible. Angel designed this one, Teresa made it and Gina quilted it and this one has a really cool snowflake pantograph. And then the last one I'm gonna show you is just a basic, this is actually way in advance. This is just a basic panel quilt. <clears throat> it's not in stock, <clears throat> sorry, it's from the Gray's collection. And Sweetwater usually does these pre pack they usually do one prepackaged panel. And it's usually like, um, a, has a little bit of, texture to it, maybe like a linen, something like that, maybe canvas. It's a little bit thicker, basically. So it came prepackaged. So I went ahead and just got it. It's got all these little panels. We're going to show you a pop-up of it. And I had Gina quilt it. So it's just something plain. You can, you don't have to put any work into, but if you've got someone in your life that's like a farmer or likes farming stuff, you can just buy three fabrics, a panel, a backing, pay a quilter or quilt it yourself. You could even really do some cross hatches here. But I just, and this isn't coming out for a while, but I had Gina quilt this, so I thought, well, I'll show it to you now. I'll also show it to you when it comes in stock. Um, I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna answer questions and do pop-ups because the next section is gonna be clubs. So with clubs, um, it's gonna be kind of a spoiler, so I'm gonna give y'all a chance to tune, close your eyes if you want in a little bit. Yes, okay, let's do the pop-ups. So the first one, this is the one that was behind me. It's all the colors, Beyond Bella. This is Rocking Around, Beyond Bella, and I did forget to say on this one, the white in that is actually coriander seeds. This is Charm Pack Shortbread. So this would be a great one for kids to learn. And on that one, um, just there's really no tricks to it. It's just super easy. Sugar Plum, Sugar Plum Dreams, on that one I would use triangle paper. Summertime Fun, that's super cute. So you can see like the placement of that navy and white offset with the other colors creates a checkerboard gingham that's really fun and that'd probably be really fun for like a college dorm. This is Yuletide, so that's the one that I said was four different blocks and that inner border and binding matching. Shaded Trail, and this one I would say when you're doing this block, it would be great to you if you're gonna do this in different fabrics, do something with a small scale so that your print uh, really shows. And then snow angels would work with any type of fabric. It would even work with large scale fabric. And then my little panel from Sweetwater, super cute. Just something basic and always 
always want to show um, stuff that you can do that doesn't take a lot of work. And I'm going to answer any questions you guys have now about those quilts. So thank you to the Bothola for her super chat. She's so sweet. And then Sherry asks, could not figure out how to use the triangle paper with the charm square in white. Um, so when you're working with triangle paper, you just need to make sure that your charm pack is slightly bigger than your paper. So you have something to trim back down. Can I use triangle paper on the Christmas Eve quilt? Which one is the Christmas Eve quilt? Do you know? Uh, can we Google on website Christmas Eve? I'm not sure what the Christmas Eve is. Oh, no. Mm -mm. The Sh Sandy Gervais, I don't think so. Do you have any suggestions on learning to sew in general? Um, I would say if you're starting out, if you get your sewing machine from like a local sewing machine dealer, take their classes. They're free. They usually come with the machine and they can really give you tips on using your machine. Once you're comfortable with your machine, I would do the Ultimate Beginner series, which we have on our channel. And I would definitely start with something small. Don't get overwhelmed. The harder you pick something, the more frustrated you're gonna get. And sometimes, like I said, when doing something like this where there's no thought into it, it's like, oh, it's a cute little thing. It didn't, you know, it didn't take any time, but nobody knows. What are the background whites in these quilts? I need a couple of bolts of a white background. So the quilts I showed you used, um, some used coriander seeds, some used Beyond Bella, and the rest used the background in the collection. And those usually are listed on our website or on the pattern. So if you're looking at a pattern that's an It's Oma pattern and you click into it on our site, scroll down, there's an additional image you can click on. If it's a video, we usually list the SKU used, and if not, it's definitely in the video description box. Um, the background that I like the most is 20708-36, and that is just a white on white that Stacy Itsu did a couple of years ago that I just loved, and I just keep having Moda reprint it for our shop. We have to meet a huge minimum to do it, but um, I use it so much. I just love having it. Fishing for T Dog says, FQS and Lori's videos always get me in trouble. Shop, shop, shop. I have to list all my purchases as mental health therapy. Oh, that's funny. I was reading somewhere. There's a there's a funny podcaster that I listened to and this morning one of his viewers was like, please post more videos, it costs less than my serotonin. I thought that was funny. Are there any Christmas flannels with a small scale print? Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of one right now. Have I ever done a flange binding on a quilt? Personally, I've never done it, but I love it, and Corey Yoder has done videos on how to do it, and one of my recent quilts, Gina did a little flange in the binding for me using the crochet trim, so that was really fun. The sweet water panel that's right here is 36 by 54, so it's pretty, you know, it's not going to be like a huge, huge cover-up, but cute. The panel is coming in November. Anyone else watch on one device with another in hand looking at the Fat Quarter Shop website? Oh, that's funny. I don't think I would be coordinated enough to do that, to be honest. I need a suggestion for a black and white baby quilt with a touch of green. Okay, so we have a black and white group called Hey Y'all. You could do that take the Texas prints out and just buy the like floral and then just get like a Kona green or a Bella green or um, some hunter greens that are really good. Art Gallery has some really nice hunter greens. How do I buy bolts? So you go to fatquartershop.com, click 15 yards, and if, if we have 15 yards, then we'll add it to the cart. And then in the notes, you can say bolt discount and they will apply that. 
I love your top. I'm surprised it's purple. Oh, yeah. So I got this in like a box subscription. And Emma, I, tr I always try it on and then Emma watches me and she's like, no, mom, I really like it. So I, I kept it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three upcoming clubs. I'm going to tell you what they are. So if you're in the club and you want to be surprised, you can just close your eyes. Don't turn the video off. Just close your eyes. I don't think that these are like super spoilers though. But what we like to do is we have sample makers who make these and they're anxious to get them back. So the sooner we show them to you guys, the sooner they can get them back. So the first one's going to be Art Gallery. The second one, Ruby Star, and the third will be Cave. So this is the AGF Quarterly Club. This is the July Club. It is delayed, and it's not expected to ship until early August, which is, you know, coming up. So this is, um, let me see the pattern. Oh, here's the pattern, sorry. So basically, if you're in this club, you get a pattern, you get 16 fat quarters, and it's a full pattern. And we do list every SKU in case you wanted to use one of these for a backing. It makes it easy. And we do mix and match the collections from Art Gallery. So we list the collection names on front. We make it easy if you want to find one of the fabrics for the backing. We also list the SKU numbers for the background. So this is what, if you sign up for AGF Quarterly Club, each month you get a pattern and 16 fat quarters. And it's a mix and match of different new art gallery fabrics. So if you want this one, you would sign up for the club by early August. And I'm gonna show you on this one. This was designed by Crystal and it was quilted by Gina and Crystal went ahead and put an art gallery flannel on the back and it has owls. So this is a way to show you, even though we list these SKUs, you can put any SKU on the backing and pick any binding you would like. And Crystal does her binding where she attaches it to the back first and then sews it down with a machine on the front. So this is the art gallery club for July, but shipping in August. And I'll just kind of roll it down. And it's a really nice flannel. And if you're putting the, a flannel on the back of a quilt, you could put a light batting or not even put a batting if you want it to be more of a summer throw and not have it be too thick. This next quilt is Ruby Star Society Club. So it's called Ruby Star Quarterly Club. And this one's the same thing, will ship early August. This is designed by Crystal. She also made it and Gina quilted it. Uh, the quilting is like a squiggle. And on this one, we give you the skews and the quilt. We do give you a fat quarter cutting diagram because on this one, we if we're gonna use most of the fat quarter, we're gonna give you a diagram so that you don't miss cut. And we also give you the background skew that we used. And then this one, we also put the collections used. And this one, they're all designed, all three of these clubs are all designed by Crystal. This one's quilted by Gina. And then on the back, this is what Crystal put on the back. And I don't think that was used in the top. Let me see. So there is that one. That is Ruby Star. And we do put the month on it, so you can always go back to it to know which one goes with which. Now this next club is a lot of fun. This is, I think, the one we've had the longest. This is our Cave Quarterly Club. It has the most number of members. And same thing, it's going to ship soon. So all three of these clubs are going to ship in the next couple of weeks. This one is going to be 68 by 83. I think this one was also designed by Crystal. McKenna made this one and Abby Latimer quilted it. And this one, there's more SKUs. I believe this one has 20 fat quarters. Yeah, this one is different. It has 20 fat quarters, has a cutting diagram. Again, lists the 
the background and has the nice instructions. And this one, CAVE comes out three times a year with about 66 SKUs each time. So we just try to mix so that we think it matches. And then this is the back, backing that McKenna put on her quilt. And it's, um, it's like a little feather with a wave and it kind of matches the backing. So the, now I'm gonna answer questions on that and then we'll go into new, um, like some new stuff. And like I said, I'm going a little bit out of order today, just mixing it up, changing it up, you know, seeing what works best. Kathy asks, if you had a quilt that the collection was sold out, how would you go about picking a backing? I would probably start with the same designer. So if you had a cave quilt, I would go to fatquartershop.com, search K Facet and go to the K Facet page. If it's a Lori Holt quilt, I would just start with the same designer and designers, you know, a lot of times will keep their colors consistent. So I would probably just stick with the same designer. If that's not available, the same company. So like if it's Ruby Star, just pick another Ruby Star. That's what I would do. Um, but you don't have to do that. And even if the front is cotton, you can put flannel on the back. Just remember, like Lori says, you're the boss of your own quilt. Whatever you like is what you should do. So sometimes, like what I'll do is I'll ask Lori, what do you think? Do you think this looks good? And if she says good, then I'm good. But I sometimes do ask for a second opinion. I'll try to come up with it myself. If I don't, if I'm unsure, just ask a friend, like take a photo, send it to a friend, that kind of thing. Nantucket Summer Fat Quarter Bundles, they are all sold out. I am so sorry, that collection is probably the best selling collection we've had in three years, which is saying a lot because we've had a lot of really good sellers. It's sold out right away. Um, we are reprinting the backing that was in the designer mystery and the background white on white. Those should come in September, October. We basically had to reprint a huge amount at a higher price to get it reprinted but we felt like we needed to. Um, but that one was kind of a sleeper, meaning that kind of that's kind of me and Kevin's term. And we don't use it, I'm gonna say, so that I don't get, uh, get in trouble, but we use it as like, you know, we think it's gonna be a good seller, but it just blows out and we just can't, there's nothing we can do. So, you know, it's like a sleeper, like we thought it was gonna sell great. And then it came in and we're like, oh, okay. Sweetwater is doing an advent wreath panel. Will we carry it? Um, yes, we carry anything Sweetwater. So I don't remember that off the top of my head, but I know that Sweetwater Christmas groups from Moda ship May. So that would be my guess. Even though they say quarterly, is each club... Okay, so those three clubs right there are all quarterly. You get them once every quarter. We do have some fat quarter clubs that don't come with patterns and those are monthly. Anytime you're signing up for a club from us, just click into the product, scroll down, and we try to be very clear on exactly what you're getting. And at the top in red, we will put if the club is delayed so you don't even have to call customer service. We try to be very like forward thinking in terms of the customer and anything you're trying to look for, we always try to put it on the website. And any of those three clubs, if you sign up now, you would get that as the next shipment. You have about a week. Okay, when, this is a good question. When you make a quilt top in cotton, do you have to pre-wash the flannel for the backing? I have no idea. Now I would say if you put cotton on the front, flannel at the back, every material is gonna shrink at a different rate. So if you put cotton, and the same designer cotton on the back, it's gonna shrink at the same rate. So when you put it in the dryer, it's gonna do that. They're all gonna do that. It's totally up to you on the style you want. Some people like their quilts to be super crinkly. If it was me, I starch so that it pre-shrinks. I would probably starch, but if you wanna wash, I think that's totally fine. How much more fabric would I need to buy if I put flannel on the back? 
uh, same, I would do the same as cotton. So what I do is if it's a really, really small quilt, like 30 inches, I will add eight inches. So four inches on all sides. If it's a big quilt, I'll do five inches on all sides. But I would make sure that you do what your quilter is comfortable with because they use these big clamp things and they need to have a big enough piece to clamp. So if you ever have a question on how much bigger, just talk to your long arm quilter. There's been times where I have had maybe like not enough fabric and small, I'll just text my quilter and say, oh, do you think this would work? Send a photo and if it does work, great. If not, I have to make a plan B. Lori says that she is working on the Nantucket Summer Block of the Month finishing and having a hard time getting the points right on the hourglass blocks. Any tips? Yes. Just cut them a quarter inch bigger and trim them down. And we do always put, this is something that we always do put extra fabric in the kits we cut. And this morning I actually saw a complaint on Facebook that was like, why do they call for eight strips when, nine strips when I can get my binding out of eight strips? because we don't want you to ever have to call and get more fabric. We wanna give you more. What if you miscut a strip two and a quarter? Well, you've got that extra strip. So we are always thinking in terms of the customer, what is going to be the most helpful for the customer. And as far as I'm concerned, nobody's gonna complain if you have too much. But if you're making a quilt, a lot of people, including myself, you might hold something for a couple of years. In three years, you're not gonna be able to get that fabric. So having more is always gonna be beneficial to um, help you if you have mistakes. And everyone does do binding differently. Oh, Peach, hi Peach. She says, AGF flannel is very high quality. I'd even call it luxurious, and I never say that about flannel. Anyway, it doesn't shrink as much as usual flannels. Great. Ilsa says, can a Jolly Bar be starched? What can I make with it? I love mini quilts and scrap quilts. Can I make with them? Okay, so when you get your Jolly Bar on the back, look at your pattern. If you need that full five by 10 inch piece, you cannot starch. But if it calls for just a little bit less, you can do that. We have a lot of Jolly Bar shortcut videos and basically it's gonna shrink one side a quarter to half an inch. The other side's not gonna shrink. So you just have to like, starch one, see what it does, look at your pattern and see if you have enough room to starch or not. Steph says her Zen chic spotted layer cakes became wonky after starching. Is that normal? Yes. And it says her yardage does not, oh, sorry, we deleted it. Her yardage does not get wonky. So why, so I think that's just because it's a smaller piece, you see it more. Her yardage does not get wonky after starching. I like the layered cake for flying geese. Yeah, it that's normal. To me, that's normal. Is there enough fabric to starch the Snow Angels quilt? I, off the top of my head, I don't know. You kind of have to just look at your pattern and see. I wish I could memorize everything that we design and make, but I can't. I wish I could. Okay, so I am gonna show you in a little bit what I've been sewing, but now I'm gonna show you some new things. I haven't got to do that in a while because we haven't been live and I've been not really showing you new stuff. So just some different new things. I tried to pick a variety of totally different manufacturers, different styles, different designers. This is the Pixieville Row Quilt Kit. It's by Tasha Noel. And to open it, you take the sleeve off. And you do want to keep this anytime you get a Riley Blake kit because it does have the photo that you're going to need to refer to. So I would never get rid of this. And this has a magnet enclosure, magnet closure. And it has all the quilts, quilt fabric, and it has the pattern. And having these boxes is really nice because as you're sewing, you can keep your pieces in it. So I thought this was really cute. Um, this is a combination of piecing. So it's all pieced and I was gonna give you like a little snip. This is kind of how 
the trees are made. So it uses piecing, just a little bit harder piecing. And what my tip would be, if I was doing something like this that I don't normally do, I would cut a scrap fabric, try a unit, see how it works, perfect it before I go and cut the whole quilt. So anytime I'm just doing something different, I'm gonna test it out on you know, some scrap fabric. But I thought this was really cute. Of course, I love the pink and the aqua. It's 78 inches square. And uh, I thought some of you guys would like this. This is called Around the Bend, and it is by Noodle Head. And this is a combination of 55% linen and 45% cotton. It's pretty thick. When I bought it, I actually thought, well, I guess when I feel it, it feels linen. It feels more linen than cotton. And I just think it's really a modern, a lot of you might really like it. And it's just different. Um, it'd be great for pillowcases or um, just because the thickness of it. And that's by Robert Kaufman. This next one is Allison Glass. This just came in yesterday. It's The collection is called Between, and we um, usually carry her collections, and we usually carry all of her. She always has a collection every year. I'm trying to think of what it's called. It comes out in January, but we do always carry that also. Very modern, and it's Andover. This next one is Chocolate Covered Cherries by Kim Deal, Henry Glass. Kim Deal is a very good seller and very popular designer with Henry Glass. And she does have some Martingale books, so if you're ever looking for some designs that would work well with Kim Deal, she has so many Martingale books, you could just, you might already have one, but she has so many books to support her fabric, which is always helpful. The Sweet Snips finally came back in stock. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting on these for months. So finally came back in stock. Hopefully our stash lasts. I think I bought like 10. I have scissors all over the place. Um, I have these little munchkins that live in my house and they come and steal things. It's actually me, but I like to blame my children. I'm very, uh, I lose a lot of things. There was one time when Kevin and I were dating that I lost a phone. And we ended up figuring out that I threw it away in the trash can. I'm not even kidding. Like, I must have been on the phone. And this was back when there was, like, cell phones, but not really. You still had to. So I couldn't talk to him because I threw my phone away. Like, I literally threw it in the garbage. This one is Beyond Bella. And the only reason I'm showing you is we got the pre-cuts and we got the yardage, but the layer cake just now came in and it's very, it came in much later than the rest of the pre-cut. So I just wanted to let you know, we did get some questions, but they, this is finally here. And this is one of the ones that we had the quilt of that's hanging behind me. But just, you know, just so you know, the layer cake did finally come. We got one of Lori Holt's new binders she has binders with Riley Blake. Some are smaller and some are bigger. This prairie one is one of the bigger ones where you can put those plastic uh, inserts in to put your so simple shapes. This week, earlier this week, we came out with two videos, or actually I think it was last week, and it's a stocking video and something we had never done, and we used the wovens from Merry Little Christmas by Bonnie and Camille, and we made this template. It's a stocking template, and you buy one, and it has, you would use this for the front and the back. This is the heel. Well, I don't know, one's the toe, oh, this is the toe, this is the heel. And um, with your template comes full instructions but we also have a video that's step-by-step -step guide and it also tells you exactly what to do. We even recommend um, which interfacing to use for the applique. We tried several. And this, I'm gonna be honest, is almost sold out. 
we are having we have never done something like this so we weren't really sure how many to buy we're getting low and we're gonna have more in September if it sells out we did put some gridded lines on this when you start you take this brown off just so you know gridded lines so that if you're wanting to make sure maybe your stripe is straight that's why it has gridded lines so this video came out on the fat quarter shop channel last week and if you didn't know we have a fat quarter shop floss tube channel that's our cross stitch channel and we did a cross stitch uh what do you call that monogram a cuff just to show you and this is a great thing to show you is anytime you um are doing something just think outside the box you know you don't have to do this you could put a fun crazy cave print always think of what you can do to make it different you don't have to make it exactly like we make it so those are some new things boo crew just wrapped up and this is our free halloween and you can see a full reveal of the quilts on the blog our social media there are free videos to go with all of this it's a completely free pattern we do this as a thank you for being such a great customer and um, i will say i'm so happy because we try to step out the outside the box sometimes it's really hard but we try and I was so scared of this purple. I thought, oh my gosh, we're gonna get so many complaints. I cannot tell you how many fun quilts I've seen with this and the wild, this, these wild fabrics that look crazy. I'm gonna show you some of them. And then um, this one's mine. And what I did was I just used the hot hammer and put this down and Gina quilted this one. And now we're gonna show you some photos of some of your fun quilts from Boo Crew. So this is Amanda Garcia, and um, I think that might be an Andover fabric. But any of these, what I would refer you to is go find them on Instagram, Facebook, and you can ask them questions on what they use. So that's Amanda Garcia's. Amira from Little Mushroom Cap. So she kind of did a combo of the fabrics we suggested and different fabrics. And she added a charm pack border or mini charm pack. Angela Kovnica, and I love that bright purple. Beverly McCullough. Kathy Burton. Cindy Garros. Galia Corsi. Kayleen Rich. And me and my sister designs. Now on this one, I want you to, you can kind of zoom in and see, but it she her quilter put made the quilting somehow stand out so it's like spooky scary screamy it's all a squeal giggles all the way around the border she um she did some accent quilting which is really cool and it is their fabric that we used melanie call pat sloan reese or Tonali, Stacy Fleming, Susan Jarselik, she made two. So uh, one thing that's good is if you ever follow the hashtags that we do on either any of the things, you can see a lot of the people use different fabrics. They had fun with borders. They had fun with quilting. So. Anytime we give you something, just try to think of how you can make it your own because those are really fun. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a short little break. When I come back, I am going to answer any questions and I'm gonna show you some stuff that I've been sewing and I will be right back.
take a break. Um, so now I'm gonna answer the questions that are in there. I'm gonna show you some stuff I'm working on and I am gonna give you some tips on trimming your quilt top. So the first question is, will Designer Mystery subscribers get an email when the backing is in stock? So what you'll do is go to our website now, type in 55260-11 and click to be notified when it comes in stock. And then when it comes in, we'll email you and then you just go, we're not gonna make more backing sets, we're just gonna have the yardage and then you would just buy the appropriate yardage. When is Tula Pink's Parisville expected? Um, August, so probably, I would say late August. It hasn't shipped that I know of. Oh, Peach says this is a fun live stream. Thank you. When will the Prairie, oh, this is a great question. When will Lori's Prairie Meadow Sew Along Quilt Kit ship? So she is currently finalizing the pattern with Riley Blake. All the fabric is here. Everything's ready to go, but we will not ship that out until we get the pattern so that we send you the correct amount. So probably a couple weeks, one or two weeks. Looking for backing suggestions for my favorite color is Moda. Um, I would just kind of look at what you used in the front, find one you like, and then if it's discontinued, maybe look on Etsy to see if a store still has it. I do starch the binding and backing of my quilts. The only time I do not is if I'm in a huge time crunch or if I'm using Shannon, Minky, really soft stuff. Okay. Charlotte says, do you have any recommendations for wool quilts or quilts with wool applique? I recently bought wool fabric, but I'm not sure what to do with it. I've never sewn with wool. I would refer you to Primitive Gatherings uh, YouTube channel. She works with wool and I'm sure she has tons of tips. She even has like a wool subscription box. And I would do whatever she says because I've never done it, so I have no idea. When I buy a fat quarter bundle, should I remove it from the plastic wrap or is it better to store? I live in a dry climate. Oh, I have no idea. Whatever you want to do. I, if it has the name of the bundle on it, I would leave it in the plastic so you remember what it is in case you don't use it for a couple of years. Oh, someone's asking about PayPal. We are using PayPal just fine. So I know there was one day that PayPal was down. It was a nationwide outage or something but we are accepting paypal so if you're having trouble with that um just call customer service or email us and we will help you when sewing strips together how do you keep them from getting wonky so what i would do is when you cut your strip make sure you line up your ruler on the bottom of the fabric so that when you cut your strip it comes out straight and not wavy and when you sew them together, make sure you line up the tops, the sides, and just be really careful with your diagonal line. So now I'm gonna move into different things that we are working on here at Fat Quarter Shop. We talked about this a couple of times. It's called the Letters to Santa Quilt Along. And the pattern is based on the mini alphabet quilt by Primitive Gatherings. And the paper pattern will be in stock later today, but we do have the PDF in stock. I will refer you to Moda's blog and sign up for their newsletter, and they email you every time a word comes out. I'm gonna pop up the image that I'm going with. And on this, I changed Cider to Jolly and Rudolph to Holiday. But I wanna direct you to look, for example, at the word Holiday and look at the space between the L and the I. And then look at the word love and the space between L and O. And you'll see that there it looks good, but I'm gonna show you something that I've kind of run into. So, did the word holiday. Now, Jordan's gonna click back to that. And there you see the space, but here it's much more obvious. So I am considering Pulling the seam out, pulling the seam out and trimming it so it would look more like this 
or taking both of those seams out and then just adding a piece here and here here sorry so yeah I'm considering taking this whole thing out right here because it looks funny so you can comment, we can do a little poll, and you can let me know if I should leave it as it is. I think in the end it won't look too bad, but it drives me crazy. So there's Holiday. And it's only L that I've noticed so far. Christmas. And if you watch last week's live stream on um, last week, July 22nd, I list all the SKUs I'm using. I am using the Christmas Stitch Collection. And this is a fun one because you can get ahead because you see the finished quilt and you already kind of know what the sashings are. So you can actually get ahead on this one. Santa. And then this one, I was a little bit concerned on this one that the gingham might be too big and then the word not show, but it ended up fine. So I'm very happy with that. And that was one thing I was nervous about. So I'm very happy with that. And then these are some of the little bonus blocks. And then on this one, I had a tip for you just to show, just to give you a little hint on what you can do to make your sewing go a little bit faster. So one of the next words is pie. So I've got P, I, and E. And one thing that I think is easy is taking the pattern, and I'll show you kind of how it looks. So the pattern kind of looks like this, where it gives you a letter, it has the sizes, the cut sizes. So what is a good idea if you wanna go faster or be more efficient is you can get design boards, put your letter if you want, and then cut them out and just place them exactly where they would go. And what I did on this is um, I drew the friction line and I glued it down and I glued that down last night so all I have to do now is like sew lines and then what I would do is when I let's say if I was at home I would sew this this together I'd probably sew this together that's probably as much as I could do on the first but then this I would sew this together this together this together and then this I would do these three together I would iron all of these at one time. Go back. And then I would just start piecing so that you're not piecing one block, go into the ironing board, one block, one block, one block. So that's just a tip for me, from me to you on a way to be efficient. So that's the next block I'll be doing. And oh my gosh, I'm so glad Lori commented. She said, fix, fix, fix. Okay, good. I'm going to fix it. And the letters, they only come in one size. And this is just, an, this is actually a much, this pattern has been around for I think eight years and Moda just kind of started using it, but it's an older uh, primitive gatherings pattern. And it only comes in one size. And I am pressing um, some open, some not open, um, kind of depends. But I can show you maybe some in the back. I think I showed some, but I'll show a couple. So some, some of the seams are open and some are not. So I'll show you this bigger one. So like this right here, it's a flying geese, so I didn't press it open. It just kind of depends. And you'll, if you look at some of the others, you'll see there, it just depends what day. I don't always do things the same each day. The size of those boards, 14. And then this board is, 10. So I have like boards on top of boards on top of boards. So I just pick up whatever fits. 
another thing I did last night was I got caught up on motor blockheads. Now, I worked pretty late last night, so I did not figure out which one of these is which because I w it was too late. So I have now officially caught up, yay, on motor blockheads. So I'm so excited about that. But I did want to show you this. We're going to zoom way in. This was Monday. And then Lori has a good comment. She says she's going to do the same quilt but use her Spelling Bee book because her book has larger blocks and then she would have like a larger quilt. So if you want larger, larger letters, those are in Lori's Spelling Bee book. So on here, this is called Kimberly Has a Bad Day. I went home. I cut my stuff, I sewed it together. I was like, you know what, I'm in a hurry. I'm just gonna do this. It's just a friendship star. I'm not gonna pin, I'm just gonna throw it together. This was like, poo poo. I'm not gonna put that in my quilt. I was like, so ridiculous. So I redid it. And basically what I told myself is like, you can do better. This doesn't look good. It's chunky, it's just like wavy, it's horrible. So I redid it pressed open and I'll throw this one away. So, you know, sometimes I don't sew accurately, but I take the time to just stop, reset, redo. And then last night I did this. I did all of these last night actually. So I am working on the scrappy strings and now I only have nine blocks left. So I'm gonna be making this right here and I'm gonna show you my blocks. Now this block on the back of my quilt, I am going to be putting the, the 90 inch wide Shannon. So this skew is C390 alloy. So I don't want to have to piece this because it's Shannon fabric, it has fuzz. So I'm putting the label on the front of my quilt. So. I put the label here. Now it is right at a quarter inch. I should have made it longer, but I do think this will work. So I'm gonna put this, like it says on the bottom right. So I made all of these last night. I'm actually going to be able to finish tonight all of them and then um, start laying them out. So this one is the Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. And I just have to make the rest of those with that and then I've got to make some with Cory Yoder's. Those fabrics were starching. I'm going to show you a pop-up of the starching. So this is what I do is I take the Moda cap sets and I just cut some strips off. I, I, I starch them and then I make these blocks. And so all of these blocks you're about to see are from that starching. And the reason I'm not done is the others, I didn't have enough space. So I had some leftover strips from branching out. So I was able to get three blocks out of that. So there's those. And then this is on the Lori Holt interfacing that will be back in stock soon. And um, I just got the cap sets from Moda that were left over from our meeting. So that's what these are all sewn out of. This is Junk Journal by Kathy Holden. This is Blue to France by French General. And the sizes of the strips are all in the book. And then Sundance by Crystal Manning. I've never used her fabric before. So what I did is I starched it and I took the green out. There's like a green in it, so I just took it out. And so because I took the green out, I only had enough to make two. But blue and yellow definitely fits um, my color scheme. This is Stateside by Sweetwater. Oh, and then stateside, oh, on this one, I was able to get four. 
So if I can get four, I definitely do. I get as many as I can out of a collection. And then this one, I was able to get three. This is Sweet Liberty by Acorn Quilts. And so I have eight left or nine left to make. And what I'm going to do with that is I am going to, I have some leftovers or some cap sets from Corey Yoder, Sherry and Chelsea. And then I have the Prairie collection that I just starched. And I do see a question on what am I doing with Prairie. Prairie is, we are going to have a scrappiness is happiness sew along and I'm going to be using Prairie for that. So I've actually starched the layer cake to start. It won't be enough for the whole thing, but I started starched the layer cake so that I can make some of these blocks to put in this quilt. Um, this is such a nice way to see the fabrics together. You get a nice feel for the bundle. Yes, that's a great point. And then what I came up with last night is for those blocks, I wanted a binding that would really stick out and be kind of bold. So what I decided is this is a So Cherry print that we, we had Riley Blake reprint for us. And years ago, and I had to buy two pieces because I came up with this idea after, um, Miss Rosie came and she did a binding tutorial for our channel and it was on really fat chunky binding so it'd be kind of like kind of like this because with those blocks they're busy so I wanted a binding that wasn't going to get lost so first I picked this fabric because it's bold and I think it would stand out. But then I thought, oh, that's going to look so good if I do the method that Carrie did. So Teresa is going, she works for us. She's going to do the wide binding and she's just going to follow the tutorial and the method that Miss Rosie did. But I think that's going to be a way for it, my binding not get lost in all the blocks. And then there is a good tip from Elaine she says some teachers say to sew the strips in opposite ways every other strip to prevent it from being wonky that is a great tip too i just never keep mine straight so i don't know and then lori says she's going to also add a few of her christmas blocks like santa because they're the same size as my letters a few more quilts to show you these, this is our Tutorial Tuesday that came out this week. So just so you know, every Tuesday on our social media, we release, we re-feature an older video that we've done just to kind of keep it going. And this was the Jelly Snowflake quilt we did a few years ago. I think we did it in July 2020. And this is Christmas Figs too. So this is no longer available, but it would look just as good in Christmas Stitched. And so this is the free video and we have videos, it's different sections. So like part one, part two, part three. So if you're looking to do something with the jelly roll, this is a great video. And that was the first one we did. And then now remember these are from 2020. So these fabrics are no longer available. And that one is, was quilted by Mike, made by Teresa. We also at the time did Country Christmas in Bunny Hill. Nancy made it, Mike quilted it, and this would also look good in I Believe in Angels. So just showing you, um, we have so much content on our channel and so many free resources for you. You know, just, just look and see what we have. We have lots to offer. I uh, wanted to show you flash sale today. This uh, is called Hope and Bloom Insulated Tumbler, and it is on flash sale. And Schmetz needles are on sale 20% off for a cup uh, ends today at midnight. So if you need a stack of Schmetz needles, now would be the time to get them. And then we have some quilt kits on sale. Uh, we have a lot of quilt kits on sale, but I just want to show you some. So Prairie Days. 
came out, I think in January. And on I, what I wanted to tell you on all of these, if you ever see a quilt you like, but you might not want to make it, you can still buy the kit and turn it into something else. Even the backing sets. So all of these, um, some of them have backing sets on sale also. The Lovey Dovey Quilt Kit is one of my favorites. We did a video with Layla Boutique last December and it shows you how you make the block. So that's a great resource. Whirlwind uses Petal Power by me and my sister designs. This one's a little bit older. Polychromatic, um, that uses paint box from Elizabeth Hartman and then it uses an Essex linen on the background. Comfort and Joy is a flannel tulip pink kit. And then I wanted to remind you guys that we do have a YouTube membership. And if you are a YouTube member, this week I did a Q&A video and I did in that video some sneak peeks and just kind of some hints on some different things that are coming to Fat Quarter Shop. So if you're interested in joining, now would be a good time because you can go back and get um, some information on some new quilt alongs. Now I wanted to show you some other quilts that just came back from the quilters and just show them to you. And then I'm gonna, we're gonna need the mat to cut. Um, so this one right here, I showed you, I think last week or two weeks ago. This is the Waybridge Table Runner from Tabletastic 3, the Bell Isle Collection, and you're gonna see on all of these, they're trimmed a quarter inch away. And the reason why is I like to add fatness to my binding. So this was quilted by Sarah Campbell of stitchmodequilts.com. And I think it, you know, I was very nervous about this one because of this, but right here, we're gonna somehow straighten this out. That's basically, we cut it fatter here so that when you put the binding on, that wave goes away. So by cutting it actually straight and, let me show you a tip. Hold on, I'm gonna take this off because I can't stand these stupid things. Okay, so remember when we talked about this, we talked about how it's crooked. So when it came back from the quilter, if you cut your binding exactly 45 degrees in all your corners, and we add the binding, we're just gonna make sure we cover it right there. And we're just gonna have to make sure when we put the binding on that it picks it up. But that's how I'm gonna straighten my mistake, my curve, is by cutting my binding straight and do some trick binding. So I'll show it to you, and Teresa's actually doing it for me. So, um, and I'll show you the back. And on the back, you can kind of see the pantograph she used. And then this is just a label that I popped on top. Another one that just came back from the quilter I also showed you last week or the week before, Layer Cake Spools. This is a free shortcut pattern. I use the Dwell Collection by Camille and Sarah Campbell of Stitch Mode Quilts quilted this one and she did feathers. And it's really pretty and it's white stitching. And then I'm gonna show you the backing. Okay, so what I did here is, again, cut it a quarter inch away and see how the ruler lands on it. That's gonna create that perfect corner for you. So we do have a video we're linking to it's called How to Hand Bind a Quilt Featuring the Binding Tool. And I just wanted you to see, Teresa takes these, she trims them a quarter inch away and she adds the binding for me because I don't have time. But she trimmed these and I wanna show you something else. So I put the label here and then there's also a label on the back. So I totally messed up. But I hope that this trick of trimming your quilt 
perfectly square on that angle. Now also another thing to do is I cut these like that. So that's another thing, we just haven't done that yet, but I cut these so that there's no bulk when you put the binding on. Thank you. And then we have a tip to show you. So I'm actually gonna trim this on camera to show you how I do it because that video I did is so old just so you can see it. Now this one came back yesterday. Maggie Honeyman in Dallas did the quilting. I absolutely love it. It is um, tiny, tiny. So I'm going to show you on this quilt so that I could just imagine myself if y'all didn't put a mat down, I would just totally cut into the table. I would totally would have done that. So cutting this, I'm going to kind of talk through it and do it, and it's gonna, I'm going to go a little slow. Can we zoom in just a tiny bit? Because it's hard to tell the difference between the white and the batting. That's good. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to put my ruler quarter inch line right there so that it's at the intersection of where the fabric ends and the batting begins. And so, my head's gonna get in here. Okay, and I'm gonna double, I'm gonna pull it down, I'm gonna check it. I know my head's gonna get in the video, but I wanna do it right. So I'm gonna cut this first cut. So the point is to not move your ruler and do a wave. You want it to be perfectly straight. From there, you go to the next side. And I'm showing you on a smaller quilt so that hopefully it makes sense. Now right here, you wanna put the top of your ruler right here so it's perfectly straight. And this is how you get a straight quilt. Now I have this extra, I know it's so hard to see, but that's a quarter inch of batting showing. That's because when I add my binding and you watch my video, you'll see how I do it. I put my binding right here and then I fold it over and I have a fatter full binding. I don't like my binding to have nothing in it. So from here, I'm going to put my ruler like right at the top so that it's flush. Now I'm gonna move it up because I want to not move my ruler, I wanna cut once. So I'm gonna put it at the top Have the quarter inch away. I'm just trying to do it right. And cut once. Don't move your ruler. Well, shoot, look what I did right there. I didn't cut right. And that gives you that quarter perfect, 40, I think it's 45 degree, 90, whatever degree it is. I don't ever get it right. Do the same thing here. And if you have any crookedness on your sashing, this is gonna take it out. Okay, so you're gonna see right here, see it's kind of wavy right here. So it starts at a quarter inch here and it gets an eighth of an inch here. And it goes back down to quarter inch. I'm gonna cut. And when I add my binding, can I see that red fabric, please? Okay, so I think you might be able to see it here. Pretend I'm adding my binding. See, this came out, it's an eighth of an inch away, but I want this to be straight. So I didn't cut a curve 
when I add my binding, I'm just gonna come in just a tad. And I'm gonna lay that down, but it's gonna end up straight. So even though my piecing wasn't perfect, now the last one is important to line up the top and the bottom, both seams, quarter inch away. Trim. And then I cut a triangle on the corner so there's no bulk. And it'll show it'll actually show the mitering nice this is how i trim my quilt so hopefully that will give you a tip on how to trim your quilts when you get them back now i do ask any quilter i use to not trim because i want to square it up myself or Teresa, one of us and then my label on the back now, so this is my mini swoon. So I will show it to you in a week or two when we get the binding on. Now this one I'm gonna hold and show you to the front. So this is my Simply Swoon. And I'll put it on the table. And this one was also stitched by Maggie Honeyman. And so you can see the different scale. It's like T tiny and just a little bit bigger. And then what I'm gonna do on this one, we talked about it in a previous live stream, but I made my border, I think it was, I accidentally made it bigger on accident. Either half inch or one inch bigger than Camille asked for. But this one I'm going to trim a quarter inch away before I go home take it put it on the wall at my house see if i like it if i don't like it i'm going to trim it down more and then Teresa's going to put the binding so here's the front and mm, there's my quilts for this week so I'll, oh and then i do use this i wanted to show you i do use the binding tool when i do binding now Teresa has been doing my binding and gina has been doing my binding i don't know what they use but this is what I use when I do binding because it's the only way I can figure it out. But I wanted to show you, it comes with this white thing on the back. You just have to peel it off. Because if you were trying to use it like this, you wouldn't be able to see your fabric. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna answer questions. I'm putting cuddle as my backing on a baby quilt. Would I still need batting? That is optional. So I, have not decided if I'm gonna put batting in the one that I am putting cuddle on. I think you can do either or if you want it to be light, don't put batting. Have I ever made a string quilt without matching line of fabric? I'd love to watch that. No, but I think that Lori's in the book is all scraps. When will Lori's interfacing be back in stock? Um, I'm hoping in a month. What am I watching lately? Not much, there's not much good on. Um, really, not much. I really am desperate for things to watch. So if you wanna comment and give me some suggestions, that would be so lovely, because I'm out of things to watch. I was kind of embarrassed, because the other night, Kevin and I went to dinner with a sales rep, and we were talking about like all the, we were talking about streaming, and like where is streaming going versus TV? Do you have a TV membership, cable? We, we were talking about all the things. And I was so embarrassed, because Kevin was like, Kimberly, that's all she does is watch stuff. He's like, she's walking around the house with her headphones on. That's all she does is like, I'm like, that's not all I do. But he is right. I do always have my headphones on. And I didn't, sometimes I don't think about how stupid it looks. But he's like, if you find her in the house, she's got her headphones on. I'm like, you don't need to tell the sales rep that. That's embarrassing. How, how far away from the fabric do you trim the corners? Okay, I'll show you up close to what I did. It's very um, haphazard. It's, um, I just cut it at an angle. It's just right there. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm trying to do is when you turn that miter over, it's not gonna fold if you have all this bulk. Any tips for making the Swoon 16 blocks? I would use triangle paper if you can definitely starch. I would use friction pen, 
pen. I would use glue. I would just go as, and I would also do what I did on this one, which I talked about recently, is I made all the corners wrong. Well, I made the corners wrong on one block first. So just do, um, do one block. Make sure you have it right before you go on. Scrappiness is Happiness Quilt Along is going to be in a couple of months. It's going to be in November. More information to come. It's going to be totally awesome. But I am sneak sewing and sewing in advance this weekend because I want to be able to show it to you and give you some options on your fabric. Have I watched The Most Hated Man on Netflix? Yes, I did watch it. I watched it the same day it came out. And I think I had heard of it before. Um, but that mom, she reminded me of me. That is what I would have done. I would have kicked his butt. That lady, I was like, you are my, like, what do you call that, spirit animal. I was like, that's totally what I would have done. I told, that's totally my personality. I ran right over that guy. Thank you from Parker Bug from Super Chat. Thank you. Um, and then Lori says that's how she cuts hers, and it works out perfectly. Yay! If you cut a quarter inch away with all your cornerstones, will they still measure the same without? Um, it might be slightly off, but I'd rather my quilt be square. So when it's on the table, it's square because nobody's going to notice the cornerstones. And honestly, this is subjective. This is just what I came up with years ago. I used to do all the binding myself now that I'm doing more and more sewing, I'm having Teresa help me with some of my stuff and then um, so that I can keep, you know, producing content because if I sit and do binding, I have no content for you. So, what headphones do I use? Okay, I'm using Bose nose can noise canceling, nose cancel noise canceling. I have a gray pair, I have a pink pair, and then I always have to change out the earbuds like every six months, so I'll have to buy new ones. They're getting kind of rickety. They're about three years old, both of them. And I was like, you know, I might need a new pair, but I sleep in them. So I kind of destroy them because you should not sleep in headphones, but that's how I sleep. I watch law and crime live trials and past trials as well as their incident videos. Yeah, I don't really like the, I like that channel. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I could sit and watch every detail. Am I doing another jo Jolly Snowflake 2? We haven't planned next year, so every year we do a free Christmas series. This year's Christmas series is going to be really cute, and it's more novelty-based, where you're actually making kind of a picture-ish block. So this year's won't be, but we haven't planned next year's yet. What are the best needles to use for hand binding? I like to use the clover gold needles. They're just very, I like them because they're thick and um, they will not break. Because you can see my quilting, if you look at my quilting, it's very dense. And when you're putting the binding on, you're putting your needle in and there's not a lot of give. They're called clover black gold sharp needles, size 9, 10, and 11, 9, 10, and 12. But I don't have much give because I quilt so dense, so I need something thick. So a lot of people probably would use something thinner. Thank you for the visual tips. Visual tips stay in memory longer and better. Yes, and I really want you guys to watch that old binding video because it's such an old video, but it is what I still do today. I haven't changed one thing of how I do it. And I do feel like my quilts come out really nice. Um, Am I doing the strip quilt from Scrappiness is Happiness for the quilt along? No, that quilt is just a standalone fun, fun quilt. I think I'm going to keep making them just fun. I think it's just fun to show blocks. I think it's a great way to show off fabric. I get those cap sets for free from Moda. Why not use them? Um, I did get a new table I'm so excited about, and I was going to show you a photo. Um, I'm able to now organize all my paper and I was able to reorganize my triangles on a roll bin right there because my extras now go in the drawer on the left you can't see all of them but I'm so excited that I'm like organized so that's super exciting and then I wanted to let you guys know um I'm not sure if y'all knew Melanie Ham she was a great youtuber 
she passed away recently of cancer. It was a very long journey. I personally did not know Melanie Ham, but I loved her crochet videos. She did some really fun crochet stuff. And she passed away from a very aggressive cancer. She was younger than me. And her husband put out a documentary. The documentary debuted this morning. I am going to watch it. The only reason I didn't start watching it on the way to work is because I didn't want to start crying before I showed up. But I just wanted to, she was a great member of the community. She had great content. I always watched her. I obviously didn't know her personally, but just thought you guys should go watch that um, today. That'd be a great thing to watch. Um, her husband put it together. Um, and I will end with that and I will see you guys next week.